Oh, Blue, say it ain't so, and you're trolling us with some sort of clickbait thumbnail, right? You guys saw that, being able to score some of these coins for free, say it ain't so. Well, it is so, and allow me to explain, if this is your first time here, of course, welcome. I'm Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. This is the Pocket Change Market Report for August 13, 2022. All right, so you've heard me say that a lot of the coins found, errors, varieties, you know, you go through lots of coin rolls, you go through Pocket Change, and in a way, you're playing with house money, right? You've heard me say that. It's really comparable to free. Sure, you go to a bank, you pick up, say, for example, $10 in quarters, another $5 in pennies. You know, you pick up all these rolls, you go through them, you find a really nice error, and you take all the other coins back to the bank. You know, all it takes is a little bit of time and effort, a little bit of a drive to the local financial, and you got yourself a coin that, you know, you picked up for $0.25, cents, and now all of a sudden it's worth $25. Yeah, in a way, it's free. And uh, this, again, the way that the market is set up today and the way that the coins that are being pumped out of the mint here in recent memory, just in the last two years, ladies and gentlemen, has has really woken up a sleeping giant, something that is unprecedented. We haven't seen more errors and more varieties come out of the U.S. Mint than what we're seeing today. And people are still capitalizing on it. Furthermore, people are discovering new pieces as they're being found with new releases. The American Women series of quarters. I could go on forever, but we're not. We're going to talk about some of the most relevant coins that sold on eBay in the last 48 hours. We have a boatload of coins, ladies and gentlemen. Some of it, of course, has been found for free. All right, so I'm going to reiterate and just kind of throw that. This will probably be the last time you hear me kind of make this comparison from free to just, you know, going out there and actually, um, you know, going to the bank and, uh, you know, doing the, you know, again, playing with house money deal. Uh, they're both kind of one and the same, but you see where I'm getting at. Hopefully I didn't over explain it too much. But we have a pretty, pretty nice lineup of coins, uh, you know, as uh, some of the mainstays. We're going to do some uh, kind of like uh, market updates on a few of the coins that uh, that me personally, I'm, I'm invested in knowing more about because they're so new. In addition to a couple of 2021 coin errors that I forgot even existed. You know, I haven't talked about them in quite some while. And with all the other finds out there that you know that have honestly overshadowed a few of these coins from last year you're not going to want to miss this uh these are all out there for the taking all right let's go ahead and check and see what has sold here in the last two days again uh no graded coins why grade them uh adds an extra added expense and oftentimes these errors and varieties if they're attributed correctly will certainly sell for themselves all right, so let's go ahead and see what we have here starting out. Uh, we're going to start it out, you know, a little bit easy. All right, we got this 1999 Lincoln Memorial Cent. Obviously, it struck a little bit off center. Uh, probably 15% is a semi-accurate uh, kind of spread on this one. But, uh, yeah, features a full date. It's Philadelphia minted, and it is indeed one of the more uh, common dates for this type of error. And uh, the coin is in decent shape. It's not the perfect example. I've seen way better examples um, that that doesn't nearly show as much circulation wear, but this one's just okay. Well, I'm happy to report that this coin ended up selling for $13.99, which still puts it into kind of like that $10 to $20 mark that normally these, uh, I guess, 1998 to 2001 off-center strikes normally sell for. So good to see this one here kicking it off here on the PCMR. The next one that we have here, so we went from slow to super fast. All right. It's uh, it's pretty crazy how, how we could go from a coin that sold for $13 to one that sold for nearly $1,200. So you got to be careful. The three-legged Buffalo 1937D 
is a widely counterfeited coin. And I've always said, if you're going to get one of these, buy one that's already graded and slabbed, right? That's kind of like the safe bet. But if you know what you're looking for and you know how to, how to identify specific kind of pickup points of the coin, you're going to be in good shape. Now, this one right here, obviously missing that foreleg right there on good old black diamond. But also keep an eye out for a few of the other things, kind of like this uh, this pebbly rusted die look of the neck of the Indian here on the obverse is one of the big things. These things were generally um, struck not too good. And that's primarily why we have this abraded die issue on the, uh, the this foreleg here, and that's why it's gone. Uh, aside from that, you're going to notice traditional kind of weakness here on this rear leg, um, which is kind of, which is, you know, par for the course for a three legged buffalo. But also, you're going to notice this kind of like pebbly kind of semicircle. Some would even say the peeing buffalo. If it's not there, it's not real. However, that one is going to be there. Uh, I, I mean, there's a lot of uh, heavy dye flow uh, on these examples. Um, and the ones that are traditionally counterfeited won't have that at all. So make sure that you're looking at these specific diagnostics of a three-legged buffalo before you go and pull the trigger. They could get pretty pricey. Uh, this one, based off of the actual horn and all that, I would say is a really solid XF45+. plus. Um, would love to see this one in hand to gain some sort of understanding of the amount of luster that may or may not exist on the coin. Uh, but yeah, $1,195 is what this one ultimately sold for. Someone hit the buy it now button, and now they're an owner of this coin. Uh, I would say the safe bet, if you receive it, let's go ahead and grade it. For those of you that do have one offer for sale, it's always a good idea to send it to either PCGS, NGC, or even Annex if you're looking for a more affordable option. All three will work out just the same. It's a great way to kind of safeguard the investment and help you along with the sale. All right, we will, well, we have another Buffalo, not quite as impressive as a three-legged. I mean, that's a tough act to follow, but we have a 1929 Buffalo nickel. Uh, now, you know, the coin is an average circulated graded example. However, you see on the reverse uh, a couple of craters. Uh, this is indeed a defective planchet, probably more so a uh, detached lamination that had fallen off the coin at one point. Keeping in mind, they had some pretty serious annealing issues, okay, with these coins going all the way into the Jefferson Nickel series, the Silver War times, things like that. So this is something that you see quite extensively. I have actually a nice little collection of laminations, uh, strikethroughs, and all sorts of weird stuff, uh, woodies uh, from the Buffalo Nickel series. And here's another example of that. Now, the strange part was is that the seller said this was an S-minted coin. It's not. It doesn't have a mint mark under the word five cents or words five cents. Uh, so, yeah, just a traditional Philadelphia. This one sold for $9.95. Uh, not a great-looking coin as far as grade-wise, but I could imagine that this coin was picked up on the cheap, you know, under a dollar, and then a quick flip for almost ten dollars is uh, exactly what you want to do when it comes to trying to make some extra money from this hobby. Well, we we have a, a decent one here. This is actually a brand new five dollar bill. It doesn't look like it. It's circulated a little bit, but it's a 2017 A series. $5 Fed Reserve note, but you'll notice, uh, yeah, the print is a little bit uh, kind of wonky of this one. Um, it, it, it's looking like it's a miscut, a uh, rather minor miscut because the margins are uh, non-existent there on the bottom. Uh, when we look at the back of the note, you'll see it as well. You got a much fatter margin up top uh, and a thinner margin at the bottom. Uh, this note right here, believe it or not, sold for $40, and uh, that's what we're looking at here. Um, it, it looks legit. Uh, the note looks of size, uh, but you always have to be careful that, you know, there are folks that will trim, they'll trim notes to, to give it that appearance. And that's why I'm not a personal fan of the miscut error, um, is that people have miscut or they've, they actually trim down notes. They've taken full sheets and cut them all funky. So that way they look like a miscut. And they, you know, they try and, uh, you know, uh, get in over on the, the buyers 
of that sort of practice. So make sure that when you have these things that you don't do anything funky with them. You just go ahead and sell them. Uh, do the best that you can with the photos and make sure they're clear and accurate along with your description. Well, here's the first 2021. I forgot this thing even existed. It's been uh, probably like four or five months since I've talked about this particular strike through. And it's on the, of course, <laughs> the Washington crossing the Delaware. There's a few things that we have to unwrap with this coin. Uh, you could probably see a, a big piece of it on the obverse. But here's a little bit of a close up. Yes, we have a combination of feeder finger scrapes. Um, and also some strike through events here, all right, which are of the field restricted type. That's where the feeder finger actually has a little bit of that dark and grease that is moved around and shifted every time that feeder finger makes contact with the, uh, the working die, it's going to move it around and give it kind of like this, uh, appearance here of, um, what looks on this particular one, it looks like a meteor shower. It's kind of crazy looking. Uh, but also, uh, there's a little bit of a strike through here on the back of Washington's head. Uh, on the reverse, you're going to see some of those parallel lines as well. More feeder finger scrapes here on this side of the coin as well. Uh, this example right here ended up selling for $10.95. Uh, we do have a few more coins uh, from 2021 to talk about in this video that I totally forgot even existed. But... Yeah, pretty good here for, uh, you know, for, for a coin that is barely a year old. So make sure you're looking out for these. Uh, I would say uh, the coin has a lot more potential to go up in value, uh, seeing as how there weren't too many strike throughs. Everybody's always hung up with the crown die chips on these. So there is definitely some room to grow here on this one. There's another image there of the reverse and those feeder fingers. Uh, but next one we have here, this is a cool one. I found a few of these myself. 1945 Lincoln Wheat Cent. And you'll notice on the reverse, there is a uh, quite a bit of strike through. Um, there, I could imagine that on that particular die, there was a lot of grease uh, just kind of smathered on there. Um, can't really tell looking at the obverse, so that's why you always flip the coin over. And make sure that you're getting a 100% view of the coin. Uh, oftentimes, Folks um, overlook things like this because they don't do that. You know, they're hung up on date, key dates, silver, things like that. But always look at both sides of the coin. You just never know what you're going to find. This is not a cheap lesson at all. If you forget to look at the reverse and you, there is one of these on your coin, you're going to be giving up quite a bit of money. This particular example sold for $56 here in the last day. And um, I'm willing to bet that a lot of you will take the time to flip your coin over to see what's on the reverse. I've always loved $2 bills. And uh, this one, at first glance, seems very innocent and minor. So, again, double check and then check again what you have. Uh, this one right here has a slight misalignment of the third print. Uh, you can see that the green district seal right here above, um, on the word 2 is shifted slightly south so when that's the case the serial numbers and all that stuff is also shifted as well you have a little bit of overlap here and here all right so that's kind of like telltale signs of the misalignment and uh this one right here sold for 45 dollars and 39 cents uh the note is in spectacular shape by the way uh, again condition still plays a role in the value of some of these notes uh, yeah, I got to show the reverse, uh, you know, um, that this is iconic and, uh, it looks like it belongs on, on a note that is a hundred years old. And we have seen that before. This is just a pretty reverse. Now the picture is a little bit dark, but you can see what's happening here on this 1942 Lincoln wheat set. It has a detached lamination that goes right over the date and into Lincoln's jacket. And I would say it goes all the way to the rim. So, pretty nice catch here. Uh, this one sold for $18. Again, condition uh, on certain errors really doesn't mean a whole lot. It just has to look visually appealing. And even with the dark photos, this is still a huge win for this minor error. Now, if I've, I've always said that these type of coins should always 100% be graded. But 
Case in point with this particular sale, along with a few others I've talked about here over the summer, that probably is just not the case. We have a 1980p Jefferson Nickel that was struck on in, um, uh, a pre-82 bronze planchet. All right, so the coin is red in color, so it's going to oxidize the same way that a Lincoln scent would during that era. Uh, in addition, the coin is smaller, so you'll notice that some of the devices, especially around the edge of the coin, are cut in half or missing. Um, yeah, because this coin was minted on a one-cent planchet, which is smaller than a Jefferson Nickel planchet uh, as a standard. So this coin right here is sold for $204.98. Uh, now, is there anything to gain to grade it? Probably not. I think we're maxed out on the overall amount of money realized for this particular coin. If it was graded, you might be able to squeeze an extra 40, 50 bucks out of it. But again, there is the turnaround time component and having to spend the money to, um, you know, ship it to PCGS or NGC, uh, along with the, uh, the fees. So, yeah, I would say this is just a great sale. The pictures are clear, concise. You can see the redness of the planchet, and that's what matters. So our first uh, kind of meaningful lot is actually this one. This one threw me by surprise. And the person that actually picked this one up uh, scored a really good deal. And uh, I always tell folks, look out for bulk lots like this, okay? The big reason is that you're going to be able to flip it and make a lot more money. The idea is, at the end of the day, after fees, you double up your your uh, your money. And uh, this is a really good one. It's a lot of 12 Lincoln cents, all with clips on it. Curved clips, straight clips, you name it. Uh, and they're all older, all right, yeah, we do have some wheat scent backs in here. Uh, we also have uh, some earlier 60s Lincolns as well. Uh, this one right here is quite impressive based off of the actual size of the clip. Uh, you got to make sure that they do have the, uh, uh, you know, the proto rim uh, there on, on a lot of the examples. But just a really attractive looking group. This one ended up selling for $29.99. I mean, come on, guys. That's what... $2 and 50 cents a coin. Uh, I mean, you mean to tell me you can't flip these for $9.99 shipped a piece. Uh, and then some of the bigger ones like this one and the straight clip 55 sell for 20 bucks. This one has, um, a lot of potential rolled right into it. So, um, oh, here's some reverse images to, to show you what we have here. Just, this is incredible. I love seeing scores like this. And uh, even though I'm not the beneficiary of such a thing, someone did a really good job in recognizing that this is a uh, pretty good flip. You know, if not to add to your collection, if you're looking to, you know, make some serious cash uh, on the side, this is how you do it. And it's been quite some time since we've seen a pretty decent candy half dollar error. But now we have one to talk about. This is a 1983P Kennedy. Wow, this thing's attractive. Uh, could it have been found in a roll of half dollars? It might have. I, I've seen it and heard about it before through the forum pages and stuff. You know, they, these are out there. And uh, yeah, granted, they're not the most common of, you know, type of coins to look for. Um, they'll pop up when you least expect it. So this one's off center by about 20%. I mean, it's very attractive. Even it has a little bit of kind of like a bluish tone to it, uh, which the seller did note on this one. And uh, this one sold, wow, $89.88 was the final price. And that's with 19 bids. Very impressive sale. And speaking of impressive, I thought these things have gone down in value, but apparently not enough of them are being found, all right? So there is definitely more demand for these than supply indicates. 2022 Lincoln Shield scent with Clash dies. Uh, most notable on the obverse of the coin, although you have certain areas on the reverse with the clashing, not the strongest part of it. But when we look up close, you can see the uh, the clashing there. You can see Unum uh, that goes into the jacket area and the bow tie. This is a uh, this is one that is currently in your change. If you're on the East Coast and you have access to P minted 2022s, what are you waiting for, guys? Uh, this one 
sold for $49.24 shipped to your door. And um, kudos to the seller for putting in all these arrows and, you know, areas of note, uh, which, you know, make it easy for, you know, the buyer to make a decision on this one. Bicentennial errors have always been a perennial favorite of mine, all right, because it is a very popular one-year type coin. This one, however, exhibits uh, two clips, all right? It's simple. It's as simple as that. And sometimes all it takes is one clip to make um, a coin that most people are endeared to and make it into something extraordinary. Uh, the coin is in phenomenal shape, by the way. Uh, I don't know where the, this one was found, but yeah, I mean... You'd be hard pressed to find another one that's as good looking as this. This coin ended up selling for forty six dollars, and that's with twenty eight bids. Again, bicentennial errors are extremely coveted uh, because of the overall popularity of this coin. Well, not the best looking picture here, but we have a uh, Jefferson nickel. Can't really tell what the date is because there's some stuff right there over the date and into Jefferson's uh, code area. Um, the pictures are not that good, but I'm going to assume that this is a cut die break. All right. Just based off of the overall look of it. Uh, but you know, again, this is probably more so a lesson in photography. Take the coin out of the two by two, clean your lens <laughs> and then take pictures. Um, because uh, there have been coins with a bit of solder on it. That have the appearance of a cut. Um, but in any event, this coin sold for $12.16 with four bids. Cuds are generally the king of the error world right now when it comes to the secondary market. But there wasn't a lot of confidence in this one. Uh, if we would have gotten clear photos outside of the 2x2 two two and a close-up of that cud, and if it's legit, man, this thing could have sold for $30, $40 really easily. So... Um, it's a, uh, relatively low risk flyer on this one for whoever bought it. And if it turned out to be not as advertised, it could always be sent back. Uh, so again, a little photography tip for you guys to maximize sales success. Oh, this is a pretty cool one here. Again, it's a coin that necessarily you don't need to grade. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have here. It's a 1989 Lincoln Memorial. It is broad struck, number one. Number two, it has an indent, all right? It looks like it's double struck, but it's not. It's got an indent, uh, appears to be another coin that was overlapped on it uh, when the second strike occurred or the first strike or the second strike, yeah. Uh, so it was struck once, broad struck, and then struck again with the uh, the indent. And uh, this is kind of like that, uh, you know, this is what you, you get here. Um, huh. No, it wouldn't be double struck. It would just be struck once, um, you know, and then the uh, the coin was overlapped. It's too bad we don't have a bonded pair. That'd be awesome. So this coin right here sold for $42.36 with 14 bids. Uh, again, a really good sale. Um, it wouldn't really add a lot of value to grade it, um, especially for the later uh, copper-coated Zinkins. Uh, it, these coins are worth a lot more pre-1982 and uh, very visually appealing. Check your silver. Check your silver for anything. 1950 Roosevelt dime with one single clip, well, along with some uh, pretty clear Blakesley effect right here. Yeah, that's really all you need to know. Uh, turning a $2 coin into $11.44 is a good idea. So make sure you're looking out. Even for some of the minor errors like this, they're always going to add value. Uh, here's another one that I love talking about, and uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy looking. Uh, if you sit there and look at it long enough, you're going to try and figure out what's going on here. But we do have a uh, undated, modern, it's going to be like a modern era, era probably uh, the year 2000 and up, uh, Jefferson Nickel, that was struck through a split die cap is what we're dealing with here. So the die cap was... Uh, a late enough stage where it, it cracked at some point but still stuck to the die and then this is ultimately what your finished product's going to be like when it strikes a coin up uh so this one right here sold for 30 dollars uh which i've seen these things sell all over the place you know 20 30 bucks 
to as high as 100 plus. So, yeah, I had nothing wrong with the photos per se. Uh, it's just uh, the uh, description on this one was, was not exactly what the error type was. Now, here's just a couple uh, really neat statehood quarters. Uh, we do have a P&D set here of Georgia statehood quarters with a single curved clip on each of them. All right, you do have some Blakesley effect uh, noted on there. Uh, there's some reverse images for you. And again, the coins are in really nice shape. I'm sure these were discovered a long time ago, probably after release of the uh, Georgia quarters back in 99. Can't believe it's 23 years old now. So this uh, two coin set here sold for $26.80 with 14 bits. Wow, outstanding sale. And here's one I talked about, well, what, a month or two ago? But, yeah, I'm glad another one popped up. This is a 1920 Buffalo Nickel. Check out that cut die break on the reverse. It is massive. Um, it looks like a snowy mound that Black Diamond is standing on. But, no, that is indeed a really big uh, cut die break. So a big chunk of the die had fallen off just through general wear and tear. You know, all these strikes that these coins... Uh, that these dies produce uh, will eventually break down, you know, the dies uh, to where pieces fall off. So this one, a uh, pretty huge sale at $164.30 with 16 bids. And the same seller had a few really nice cuts. Here's another one here, 1905 Liberty V Nickel. This thing is pretty well worn, but yeah, there's a, uh, uh, what looks to be a cut. Uh, more so probably a like a retained type of cud. Uh, you do still have some areas where there is some design struck up on there. Um, it's so well worn that it's, it, you know, I'd love to see this one in at least a VF condition. That's going to give us a lot more information on this one. Um, because you don't have a lot of the same weakness on the operas, which is generally something you want to look out for with the cud die break. But in any event, this coin sold for $21 with four bits. Uh, again, that's more so a byproduct of the condition of the coin. We did have a couple Indian head sets. Uh, these things are a breeding ground of cuds and retained cuds, pre-cuds, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this one right here has a pretty sizable, uh, what looks to be a pre-cud on the reverse, 1893. Uh, not the prettiest coin. It's got a lot of carbon spotting, uh, but yet again, this is a coin that honestly you could cherry pick for a buck or two, uh, especially when dealers don't really care too much about these minor errors, especially on rather scrubby looking coins like this one. But anyways, you could turn trash into treasure really easily if you uh, do enough hunting and turn this one into $36.50 with four bids. Same goes for this one, although this one is in a much nicer condition. 1891 Indian head set. Um, so the seller says there's a cut. You guys see it? I do. It took me a, uh, half a second, but it's this little thin raised area right here on the rim. They actually call this a rim cut. So there is actually just a little bit of a break right on that area of the die on the rim. Uh, not so much the collar, but the rim is where that's at. And, uh, yeah, another solid sale. How about $38.80 with three bids? This is the type of coin that you would see at a in a coin dealer's, uh, you know, case or, you know, back stock. Uh, and it would be available for, like, five bucks. You know, that's how cheap it is. And uh, because it is a common date. This is a common date Indian head scent. And uh, just know that a lot of these minor errors will really push the value of them to a whole other level. Now this one here is more of a question mark than a um, than you know what is the case, but it's a 1945 Walking Liberty half dollar. Yeah, what's going on there on the reverse? Is it a strike through, or is it post mint damage? Okay, I think the seller really wants to know because when they put this listing up, it it noted strike through question mark, and uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, to me, the 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 weakness on the reverse looks a little unnatural like something something happened here uh that that is not part of the minting process but anyways i'll let you guys decide this will be kind of like your challenge question of the week what do you think happened here with this coin this one's ended up selling for thirty dollars and eighty cents 
with five bids. Uh, if it's a real strike through, I'd say that's a pretty good deal. And I think this is the final one for this seller, but we have a really, really nice 1902 Indianet set. Gee, I wonder what happened with this one. Yeah, it was struck off center, probably by like 10% or so. But this coin sold for $96.85 with 18 bids. Uh, a very, very popular, well-collected error type on uh, these older coins. So, Indian Ed Cents, Buffalo Nickels, Mercury Dimes, you know, all of these kind of obsolete, very popular collected coins in mint errors like this are traditionally very expensive. Well, you didn't think we'd go through a whole PCMR without at least talking about this coin, but one thing you got to know, look at this thing. This thing is a well-circulated coin. This is not a brand new out-of-a-roll example. So, yeah, this is kind of like the first one of the Wilma Man Thriller. Are you guys tired of me calling it that? Uh, I ain't changing. This is a thriller for sure. This is actually the double-sided error event. You got the obverse routine cut right there above uh, Washington's head. Kind of hard to miss. But you also have that reverse crack. Uh, this is kind of like a, a middle progression. I believe there's like five different progressions that are noted for this particular coin but yeah what is the you know circulated example of this coin going for for these days right you know you figure a mid state wants close to a thousand dollars by now but this one right here how about 405 dollars shocking uh yeah i mean still a large amount of money um you know that kind of money does a lot for a lot of people so these, if you're on in the southeast region of the U.S., I believe this coin was from a seller in Alabama, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so these are being found all over Florida, Alabama, and I believe Texas as well. Uh, these are uh, kind of like big money coins. Uh, if you're looking to, you know, save your bacon and uh, make enough money to, to pay rent or a car payment, shoot, go to the bank, get yourself some rolls and uh, look for these again. House money. These are virtually free when you do find them, so keep that in mind. Well, we do have a little update on the duplicate printed star notes. These are on only 2013B. They are in B District, New York's. Uh, this one was uh, printed at the Fort Worth facility. Now, keep in mind, the BEP facility printed the same run of serial numbers uh, twice. Okay, once at the New York, or uh, Washington, D.C., rather, uh, BEP facility. That was back in 2013. But they reprinted the same stars and the same serial numbers at the Fort Worth facility four years later. Uh, so that was made by error. And these are very expensive notes. This one sold for $39.99. And the big reason why is that people are looking for the same serial numbers for both the D.C. printing and the Fort Worth printing, they're trying to get them together, and they sell for many hundreds of dollars. Sorry, I had to get get my thoughts and my bearing about me. They sell for many hundreds of dollars as a pair, graded or not. So that's kind of like one of the big uh, selling features of these duplicate stars. Yeah, forty bucks, not too bad. That's a pretty big sale. Here's another uh, cut die break. Man, these things are all popping up everywhere in just about any date, which kind of, you know, lets us know that these are out there for the taking. Here's the 1936. Good looking coin, you know, even with the circulation wear. This one right here sold for $37. You can see the raised cut area right here, base of the bust area. Keep an eye out for these. So the same seller had uh, lots of five 1989P broad strikes. It's very impressive. I'm willing to bet a lot of these were found back in 1989 going through uh, bank bags of these uh, nickels. And that's generally where you're going to find a lot of these errors. So this five coin lot right here, uh, all very nice minty fresh coins, uh, centered broad strikes, impressive looking examples. Uh, this first group sold for $80.97 with three bids. Um, there was also another lot of five. All right. Uh, all the same date. Very, very nice. And uh, this lot ended up selling for $95.97 with three bids. 
And from the same seller, we have the uh, the biggest one out of the three. Uh, we have some pretty, pretty nice 1989p uh, coins here. Uh, all broad struck yet again, although there's some pretty nice deep dish examples here for your consideration. And then, uh, yeah, this one ended up selling for 105.98 with eight bids. So here's the other coin I forgot even existed. You know, I'm, I've always been hung up with the 2021P rotated die errors of the nickels. But yeah, guys, don't forget this one. This is actually a really cool one. This is a, a coin that exhibits the uh, filled restricted strike through on the reverse right on Monticello. Kind of hard to miss. Uh, they come in small sizes and they come in giant large sizes. So... You could put together a nice progression set. You could sell these coins on the side, make some pretty good money. This one right here ended up selling for $9.95. And that's just a byproduct of there not being enough of them in the marketplaces. Um, the photos are just okay. It really doesn't highlight the actual error. I would have loved to seen a uh, close-up of that particular anomaly as the main photo for the listing. Now, here's one that uh, always gets a lot of uh, uh, attention uh, among roll hunters and variety hunters. This is the 1988 Reverse of 89. So it's kind of got that wide AM on the reverse. It's got the uh, the different shaped uh, uh, designer initials, uh, Frank Gasparro's initials on the reverse. Uh, but yeah, if you guys aren't aware, there's a few uh, uh, kind of pickup points that you need to know about on this one. Uh, here's a few die markers. So we got certain kind of uh, uh, die scratches, all right, that are specific to this type of uh, variety, this transitional variety. Uh, on uh, Right here on Liberty, you can see some of these uh, die scrapes, die file lines as well. And then here on the reverse, the, the letter G and FG is going to have the drop gusset uh, serif or whatever you want to call this. Whereas a normal FG will just have just a regular rounded G right here. Okay, and a top a top curved tail that's a little bit longer. Uh, but here's a few more die markers as well. Take a note the, uh, the arrows. So, you know, if you have a really good magnifier, you could see these die markers on a legitimate example. Uh, so where are we looking at value-wise? We haven't talked about one of these in quite some time. This coin ended up selling for $35.00. And uh, that's a really nice circulated example. It's not the prettiest out there, but hey, um, yeah, they show up so infrequently that when one shows up, it's going to be a solid sale. Pretty nice dollar bill here, 2009. I, I mean, you know, this is one that gets overlooked and uh, we're going to talk about it and, you know, kind of revisit the error on this one. But we have an over-inked star. It's where it's almost closed up completely. You can see a little bit of the uh, a little bit of the circle there, very little bit. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, believe it or not, <laughs> people want these, and they're they're willing to whip out the good old debit card and pay a lot more money than one dollar for it. Uh, yeah, how about seventy five dollars for this one? Uh, I mean, you get to take a second look at your star notes. Uh, this is a 2009, but we've seen them in 2013s, 2017s, um, you know, inking by nature. You know, if you have an over-inked or a very saturated inked, you know, digit in the serial number, you know, you could do, see the same thing in the star. So, uh, yeah, a very, very desired, I guess. Uh, $75 is a tremendous amount of money, and... I've seen others sell for a little bit less, but I've also seen others sell for in excess of $100. So, yeah, that's just the market. It's just the way it goes. Oh, you notice Washington, D.C., a little bit of saturation right there. So, yeah, you know, another example of something to look out for. All right, the seller decided, hey, you know, instead of selling just the one amazing you know, American Samoa batch strike through. And these are, by the way, Philadelphia minted 2020s. How about we just, you know, throw in three other coins as a bonus ball. Uh, the main seller is the strike through. You can see that right on the bat face here, along with some feeder finger lines, scrapes rather. Uh, but the other three quarters have like little die chips and things in there. 
uh, that the uh, seller did note, and uh, it's kind of like a four-coin error package. But keep in mind, the coin you see on the right is the big driver of this one uh, that sold for $73.50. Almost lost it there. $73.50. Pretty nice. And then we're going to end it off on this one here. Um, yeah, it never cease to amaze these things as much of how many of these are being found and injected into the market. You'd figure the prices would plummet on these, but nope, <laughs> it hasn't. Uh, they've held a pretty good stand, a pretty good ground uh, for between $80 and $100. 2,000-piece sack dollar with the Wounded Eagle Reverse. Wow. There you go. See the couple of die gouges there? It goes right through the breast of the eagle. There's a little short one and a much longer one. That's why I got the Wounded Eagle uh, moniker. It is a cherry picker's guide variety. And the coin is in really nice shape. I would probably say it's a low-end BU example, mid-state 62-63. How about $103.99 shipped to your door is what this one sold for. Um, this is actually a very common variety. So for you folks there on the East Coast or anyone that has access to, say, a soda machine that takes dollar coins, I would certainly keep an eye out for these. Um, they're quick, easy money, and um, they're such a big find even still to this day. 22 years after the fact, who would have thought? But that's going to go ahead and do it for this one. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Did you guys have a favor today? I know at least one of you had a favor in this video. Go ahead and post it below in the comment section. Um, and hopefully the video gave you a little inspiration going into this weekend. Go ahead and find some biggies out there. They're all over the place. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell for instant notifications. And check me out on TikTok. I'm at Blue Ridge Silverhound. Hope to see you guys there sometime. But that's going to go ahead and do it. Best of luck in all your hunts. And that's it. I got nothing else to say because what else is there to say?